individuality and ego. Individuality means your uniqueness and comparison is the greatest disrespect. Our entire education system, way of life leads to comparison. Individuality means you are unique and this represents your uniqueness. It is said God created man if it be so. I am sure he did not learn anything from Henry Ford who makes the car on an assembly line and in order to identify one car from another, a chassis number is put and then each car has its own number plate to make it your and unique. But God did not create man on an assembly line. Each individual is born unique and spirituality means you are to discover your uniqueness. Your uniqueness cannot be compared with anyone else. Your incomparable uniqueness represents your individuality. Individuality is beautiful. This is, this is how God has created you as an individual. Ego means comparison. Ego is human invention and in your case it is your invention. God has not given you any ego. He has certainly given you an individuality and light or awareness. Ego is comparison. You think yourself more intelligent than the other. This is erroneous. You think yourself superior or inferior than the other. You think yourself more beautiful than the other and so on. You are thus letting ego come in unaware. The moment you compare yourself with somebody, the comparison that comes out of the comparison of ego, the false identity, this is what you see all around in many different ways. Such are the ways of finiteness and the world of conflict and duality. If you begin to discover your uniqueness, you will learn to respect others because each individual has uniqueness and we can live and progress by way of our individuality or uniqueness. If you stop comparing, then you are there tremendously beautiful and unique. All superiority or inferiority, all anxiety of where I am, where I stand, who is above me and who is below me. It is not that only superior persons suffer, the inferior too suffers. In reality both suffer because even the superior most cannot have a state where he can be satisfied. Satiation comes when you do not complain. You recognize your unique individuality. One who is superior, who considers himself to be superior, he always looks to the next state 
with no time to relax. I have heard Abraham Lincoln was not very beautiful. His face was ugly and that was a torture to him as he considered. In fact, when he stood for the presidentship, he had no beard. In his campaign, a small girl suggested to him, if you grow beard, you look a little better. Abraham Lincoln paid heed to that suggestion. Hence, he grew the beard, but he remained constantly aware of his ugliness. He became the president, but whenever he would see a beautiful face, he would feel hurt. Napoleon Bonaparte was not well tall. He was just 5'5", five five, and because of this he remained disturbed for his whole life. Now nothing is wrong in being 5'5". Five five. What is wrong in being of that? I have never felt any problem in being 5'5 five five or 5'6". Five you are just 5'7 or 5'8". Nothing is going to happen. You will remain the same. 5'5 five five or 5'7 or 5'9 makes no difference as far as your intelligence or awareness is concerned. But he was very conscious of it. One day he was trying to fix a picture on the wall and picture was a little higher than him. So his bodyguard said, Sir, I am higher than you. I will do it for you. Just this statement. He was not able to reach, so his bodyguard said, Sir, I am higher than you. I will do it for you. This hurt Napoleon. He said, Stop. Never utter such words. You are taller than me, but not certainly higher. He was very conscious about it. Higher. Say you are taller. But never say I. Now, if even Napoleon is not happy about his height, who can be? People who go on comparing can never be happy. All trees are happy. You can learn from them. The smaller tree does not bother about the higher or the taller one. Maybe both are standing next to one another. Trees are unconscious. They have no choice. But you have a choice to be conscious. So why fall below your dignity? Trees never bother about each other. The smaller is smaller and the higher is higher. In fact, the higher and the taller higher, the taller, the smaller, and the lower are all human terms that trees don't understand. Such words do not exist in the world of trees. A rose bush is as happy as a big, tall oak tree. There is no problem about it. Not even a rose bush, but just a small leaf of grass is as happy as any lotus flower. It makes no difference. Have you ever noticed that? Being aware, being on the spiritual path means we learn from everything from around. Because it is not that God is creator, but creativity is. He is unmanifest 
for an unconscious person through his entire creation and he is manifest through everything sentient or insentient that you see around this vision is the vision of the spiritual you are able to see that a blade of grass does not consider itself to be inferior than the lotus flower everything has a place in the universe in your furniture there are many leaves that remain hidden you see the outer structure but the glue the small nails that support the furniture remain invisible whether you are invisible or visible everything has its unique individuality and importance just as in a sentence there are verbs there is verb subject object do you think if you remove the subject or object or verb the sentence will be there in a chemical equation in the formation of water magnesium dioxide has no apparent part to play it remains as a catalyst does nothing but in its presence something happens but it never considers itself to be most significant or insignificant it just plays its part and walks away without waiting for kudos or recognition a spiritual person is one who never bothers about such things his concern is to do his part and allow things to happen when a person in the construction industry he makes the structure on top of the structure the next person completes the second stage then the walls are painted you do not see what went on in the initial stages when you remove the rubbish when you remove all the debris that comes out when the old structure was demolished none of these feel inferior or superior and then when the person who does the interior decoration he comes he comes dressed differently than the person who comes to collect the debris or one who comes to paint but each one of these have an important role in the process of finishing the structure each are paid differently but such is not the case as far as the plant kingdom or anything is a rose bush is as happy as a big oak tree there is no problem about it not even a rose bush but just a small leaf of grass is as happy as any lotus flower it makes no difference but the man who is collecting debris today he aspires to be a big contractor or the man who does the interior decoration god is showering on everyone the sunlight the raindrops fall equally on the rose bush on the grass leaf on the lotus flower god is 
shall be everywhere. It depends on your individual capacity, how much you are going to absorb that. How much you are going to absorb the sunlight sitting inside your room, then the person who is walking outside. The whole existence is happy and pulsating. Only man has got into trouble. Ego arises with comparison. Individuality you have. Unique individual you are. Comparison brings innumerable problems. This is your world that you and your preceptors have created around you and that creates mystery. All education system, social and political systems are based on ugly, unnatural and undivine mechanism of comparison. Be aware of it as much as possible. As far as the outer world is concerned, you cannot change this. But you can change your approach, your acceptance to this and be not bothered by it. And who has given you the idea? How do you decide what is the standard? Nobody has any idea about this standard. All averages are just phones, they are statistics. Nobody knows how much fat is needed for a particular body. Only the body mechanism itself knows. Therefore listen to your body, love your body and never compare it one animal. Comparison creates such trouble that you may miss your whole life. Because of comparison you cannot move in life. And you will create such trouble that you will not allow anyone to love you either. In fact, I have not seen an ugly person in my life. How can a person be ugly? Have you ever seen an ugly crew? Impossible. Have you ever seen an ugly tree? Impossible. All is beautiful as it is. Even a crooked tree has its uniqueness. I am using the word crooked because, because of certain reasons it grew in that form. Now you can sit down on those humps and take unique pictures. But with human beings comparison comes in and immediately trouble starts. Therefore, never compare. There is no need. And those who are in authority, working in authority in an office, have to exhibit your intrinsic qualities that you learn as an individual, as a spiritual person. And through this you can bring about a change or transformation. In the other, you are perfect as you are. Leave your, love yourself, respect yourself. If you do not respect yourself, then who is going to respect you? If you are not going to love yourself, who is going to love you. First you have to learn to respect and love yourself.
then slowly and slowly it will trickle down and you will begin to love and respect anyone that comes in your contact. Be that your spouse, children, friends, worker in the office, a commuter on the road or whosoever else. People do not respect themselves and expect everyone else to respect them. They do not love themselves and want the whole world to fall in love with them. How are you? Now you are asking the impossible. These things cannot happen. Love yourself. Respect yourself as you are first. And a person who respects himself never competes. Comparison is the greatest disrespect for you. This implies to be egoist, to be disrespectful towards you. To be individual is perfectly good. You are a unique creation. No one is like you and no one will be like you ever in future. Those who say that Jesus is coming back again, they are erroneous. History cannot repeat itself or in order for Jesus to come back as you know him, the time has to go in the reverse gear. The empire of Judea, everything has to be created. <coughs> time. <coughs> time moves forward. If you are connected with the awareness of Jesus, you know what Jesus represents, what Krishna represents when this consciousness manifests in front of you, you will be able to recognize this is what had happened. When Moses used to baptize people in River Jordan, in River Jordan with water, and it was said that he who comes after me will be mightier than I and shall baptize with fire. Moses was baptizing the people standing in River Jordan. All of a sudden a person comes and stands in front of him and asks to be baptized. As soon as Moses connected with his being, he recognized that this is the person that we had been waiting for. And he did not baptize. You have to know the inner capabilities. Only then and through those inner capabilities, you will be able to know yourself. That is why one of the important statement of all the religions is, Know thyself. Man arfa nafsahu arfa rabbahu. One of the hadith says, one who has known himself, he has known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know thyself is the first criteria. Maharishi Raman used to say to anyone who will come and ask for anything to proceed on the spiritual path, <coughs> he will tell them to know who am I. <coughs> 
unless you know who am I, unless you know thyself, how can you know others? When you know yourself that you are an individual, you are a unique creation, you carry the same spark, the same light that God is Nura Ilahi, the Jehovah, Swayam, Holy Fire. Whatever names have been given to that light, you are that. Only then you will be able to see that the spark of divinity in and around you, everything sentient or insentient. The way of spirituality is not to chant certain mantras or zikr or dress in a particular way, go to your holy places of worship. It is a transformation, transformation of understanding the way you think, the way you live your life, the way you deal with others that can come only when you have known yourself. You have known your uniqueness. That's why I keep on emphasizing be creative. In whatever you do, be creative. The more creative you are, the more uniqueness you will be aware of that how unique you are as an individual. And then slowly and slowly, consciously drop all comparisons. The painting that you did is unique, it is your, it has your signature. It is your signature painting. Everyone has a unique way of doing things, a very simple thing, a very simple thing when there are five or six different people they do in their own unique way. Do not condemn, allow them to remain unique in their own way. And from that you will be able to know that this particular work is done by this person because each one has its signature uniqueness. I see this on a day-to-day -day basis through simple day-to-day -day routine works. There is a joy in that. You are not making the other develop or grow according to certain things. No, I am nobody's role model. But my awareness, my understanding can be, can be an impetus for you. When this person respects himself, loves himself, I can learn from him the art of loving myself, art of respecting myself, but for that you have to know yourself first, that you are a unique creation. You have something unique in you that nobody else has. And the moment you discover that through your creativity, you can discover that unique quality that you have. Continue to focus on that. You will grow in individuality. Slowly and slowly comparison will vanish from your consciousness. You will respect yourself and you will respect others. That is the way of spirituality, the way of the Master. 